Hello everyone. Um, I did a video about a week ago after a long layoff and have received tremendous feedback from everybody. So thank you first and foremost for all the kind words and support of my videos. Uh, I received a comment from a viewer who said, you know, you always do comics and comic book rants and things and we love those videos, but I would like to see maybe some movie videos, some things of, that you like based on the movie genre uh, of your choice. Uh, I had done a gangster review, my favorite gangster movies pre-1950, and he liked that one. So um, I thought, you know what, it's a rainy day outside. Um, I haven't really bought anything new comic booky, So uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you my all-time favorite movies that I watch multiple times a year, and if I had to pick 30 to 35 movies to take with me, and that's the only ones I can ever watch ever again, these would be the movies. Uh, they are in no particular order. I will tell you that Halloween is my all-time favorite movie, period, end of story. I got Michael, I got Michael Myers right there on my arm, Jason, Freddy. So, uh, with that said, I'll show you some of my favorite movies. So, I hope you like it. And here we go. Number one, 1957, 12 Angry Men. This is a movie about a jury that is deliberating a murder trial. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. If you haven't seen it, this is a must. This cast is absolutely, you know, star-studded. Uh, you know, Jen, you know uh, Lee J. Cobb, Jack Warren, uh, you know, Jack, uh, young Jack Klugman, uh, you have Henry Fonda. Uh, it, it just shows the different personalities in a jury as they're trying to deliberate whether uh, a young man has committed the crime that he's being charged with. And I never get tired of this movie because it shows the jury uh, different stages, how each individual person changes the way he feels about the case. Uh, so I, I absolutely love this movie, 12 Angry Men. Uh, this is a Criterion collection. You can never go wrong with Criterion, ever. Uh, my all-time favorite, well, one of my all-time favorite John Wayne movies, Stagecoach. Stagecoach was done in 1939, and this was the movie that kind of propelled John Wayne into uh, a big star. He had done a lot of the big serial movies prior to this, and uh, this movie here, John Wayne plays a character called The Kid, and he's broken out of prison, and it basically just follows a stagecoach full of people. You have, and I, I don't want to give it away if you if you haven't seen the movie. Um, you want to see there's a uh, a gambler, a southern gambler. There is a woman whose husband is an officer in the military who's pregnant. Uh, you have a bar girl played by uh, Claire Dane uh, named Dallas. Uh, you have a drunk doctor. You have a whiskey drummer. You have a banker. You have the kid. And then you have the stagecoach driver, as well as a sheriff who's riding shotgun. And it just kind of goes through as they're trying to get from one town to another. Uh, there's Indian problems, and, you know, there's the pregnancy issue. And then, of course, the kid escaping prison and finding it. So this was a movie that I, I don't get tired of watching this movie either. Directed, of course, by John Ford, who did a lot of movies with John Wayne. Um, amazing, amazing movie, Stagecoach. Next on my list, On the Waterfront, 1954, Marlon Brando. Uh, this movie is actually, this was directed by um, Elia Kazan, who uh, has done tremendous, tremendous movies over the years. This movie was the first real movie to deal with unions. Uh, and... This is about, you know, Marlon Brando plays kind of a, a young punk who lives in a, in a tough town that's on the waterfront, uh, you know, meaning where the ships come in, unload their goods and stuff, and, and he's just kind of caught up in a, you know, trying to do the right thing, living in the neighborhood. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's a movie that, the famous scene where he's in the, in the car with his, in the taxi with his brother, and, you know, he tells his brother, you know, I could have been a contender, I could have been somebody. Uh, that scene right there is one of the uh, most famous scenes in American movies uh, by a lot of by a lot of people. It is an amazing, amazing movie. Um, so on the waterfront, Marlon Brando, very young Marlon Brando. 
I have two versions of this movie. This is the version that I prefer more. This is a European version. It's called Let the Right One In. Uh, and the American version, of course, uh, was Let Me In. And this is about a young man who lives with his mother in like an apartment complex. And a man and little girl move in next door to him. And he makes friends with the little girl only at night. And as the story progresses, you realize that the girl is a vampire. And she uh, kind of protects the boy. She, you know, kind of helps him get through. And this is this movie, the American version is the American version. The European version, which I said is let the right one in, is a lot more darker and is very well done. A lot of people don't like foreign films. I think when you watch a film, if you're going to watch a foreign film, watch it in subtitles. Don't go with the English overdub because I think it takes away from the movie. So um, let the right one in and let me in. Let me in, of course, was done, I believe, in 2010. It was in 2010 where the European version was done in 2009. Uh, so there's that. Uh, a movie that I never get tired of, and it's a John Carpenter movie, The Fog. The original, the, the remake sucked ass. Uh, the Fog, of course, 1980. Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, you have the beautiful Adrian Barbeau. You have, um, I can't think of all the names right now. Uh, Janet Lee, Hal Holbrook. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, just tons and tons of, it's about a small town celebrating its uh, centennial. And there, you know, a hundred years in the past, uh, there was a ship that had crashed and the inhabitants of that ship are now looking for their gold. And it's just, it's kind of a creepy done movie. A lot of people don't like it. It is a campy B movie. I mean, it is what it is, but for some reason, I saw this when I was a kid. I love this movie, The Fog, the original Fog. A classic for anybody, uh, 1967, Cool Hand Luke. Uh, you can't go wrong with Cool Hand Luke. Of course, the great Paul Newman plays a character who gets thrown into prison. And it's just, it's a whole, it's hard to explain this movie. I mean, it's such a great movie. Um, trust me, he's just, he's a cool, he's a cool dude. I, I love Cool Hand Luke. Uh, all of you probably know it, and of course the famous line where they're playing poker where he bluffs the guy and he makes the line, sometimes nothing's a pretty cool hand. So, I love that. Cool Hand Luke. The Godfather. The Godfather, Godfather 2. Don't need to say nothing else about that. Uh, one of the greatest uh, gangster movies uh, of all time, and stands on its own. So, Godfather's on my list. Okay. Saturday Night Fever. I love Saturday Night Fever. I've always loved Saturday Night Fever. Um, I like the soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever. Um, I was a kid when this came out. I, but it's just something about the music, uh, the time frame. I love 70s, 80s movies, the, the look of the area, and just the feel of the movie. And of course, you know, John Travolta doing his famous, uh, you know, even though he doesn't do that in the movie, it's kind of funny. Uh, Saturday Night Fever, uh, probably one of, if not one of the two favorite westerns of all time, The Searchers, John Wayne. Uh, this movie was, uh, this movie just deals with racism, but it's not racism, uh, you know, John Wayne is a kind of a wanderer who, after the Civil War, uh, has come to see his brother and his wife, and there's something kind of overtones there where... You know, he loves her, and she has feelings for him. They never really say anything, but uh, the family's massacred by Indians, and the youngest child is taken uh, by Indians, and it just shows John Wayne and another individual looking for the little girl played, um, played by Natalie Wood, beautiful Natalie Wood, young Natalie Wood, and just kind of shows how, you know, Early on, he wants to find her because he wants to save her. And then later on, he wants to find her because he wants to kill her because she's been living with Indians. So, The Searchers, John Wayne, fantastic movie. American Graffiti. If you haven't seen American Graffiti, see it. Richard Dreyfuss, Ron Howard, uh, you know, Harrison Ford. It's just a who's who of people in this movie. And here is a... A little tidbit of information for you. 
Uh, this is the last I had heard. It's the only movie in the history of film that from opening credit to ending credit has music throughout the entire movie. It's about, you know, 1962. They're, you know, people cruising around in their cars and you got the radios on, listening to the same station. And it's just, it's music. It's just, it's, a, it's one night in the life of a bunch of individuals. American Graffiti, I'm sure most of you out there have seen it. If you haven't, see it. It's a great movie. Fast Times Ridgemont High. Uh, I like this movie because I was in high school during the time of this movie. And this movie is based off of a high school in San Diego, Claremont High School. I'm from San Diego. I know that high school. Um, so it was just kind of easy to, uh, you know, I was a surfer at that time. Believe it or not, I was a surfer at that time. And it's just kind of a lot of things. The music, the way that people dress, the high school atmosphere brings back a lot of memories for me. So I've always, always enjoyed this movie. Fast Times Ridgemont High. Uh, by far my favorite gangster movie of all time. Dan's Down, Angels with Dirty Faces. Uh, I've talked about this in a previous movie video. James Cagney, Pat O'Brien. Uh, just kind of follows uh, Cagney's character, Rocky Sullivan, uh, from prison and goes back to his old neighborhood, and his good friend is now a priest, played by Pat O'Brien. It's got Humphrey Bogart in it, Dead End Kids. Uh, if you haven't seen it and you do like gangster movies, Angels with Dirty Faces. Uh, another movie of mine, I read the book when I was in junior high school, and I fell in love with the book, and I've read the book several times since then, uh, of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. Uh, this has, of course, a very young a very young Burgess Meredith and Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, if you've read the book, you know it's about two drifters that go working on a farm, George and Lenny. And Lenny's a real big guy, and he's strong, but he's kind of dumb. And, you know, George takes care of him, and incidents happen, and he's always got to back, you know, he's always got to protect him. So uh, I just, I've always loved this movie. Of Mice and Men. It was remade, but the original for me always stands alone. Universal Monsters, you can't go wrong. Um, I show the box set because Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, even The Bride of Frankenstein, all great movies. As you can see, I got Bela Lugosi tattooed on my arm. I love, love, love everything Universal Monsters, including, that wasn't included in the box set, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Same thing. The one movie they could have done without I was never an Invisible Man fan, so if they had taken the Invisible Man out of this box set and put it, put this one in instead, I would have been happy, but it doesn't matter. Creature from the Black Lagoon as well as the other Universal Monsters. Uh, a movie that I, I never get tired of, The Warriors. Typical story, street gang, New York street gang from Coney Island goes to the Bronx for a big meeting, and of course, you know, Cyrus, who just recently died like two or three days ago in real life, the actor who played Cyrus, uh, gets shot and killed. And now they got to try to get through because everybody thinks that they're the ones who killed uh, Cyrus. So that's a great movie, The Warriors, right there. Original Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. No need to explain this movie. Uh, this movie came out, I was in high school, and quite frankly, it scared the shit out of me because uh, the thought of someone getting you in your dreams, and a teenager spends a lot of time sleeping, uh, not that it terrified me, but it was just, it's, it's a freaky movie that, it was a twist on how regular horror films were done. This is something that you can't control. So, um, original Nightmare on Elm Street, love it, love it, love it. Alfred Hitchcock. I can go on and on about Alfred Hitchcock as one of my all-time favorite filmmakers, and you can list any number of his movies, but if I have to pick two movies, they're both in this box set, oh, Psycho, hands down. End of Story, and Rear Window, which is another fantastic movie. Jimmy Stewart, Grace Kelly, and Rear Window. And, of course, Anthony Perkins and a beautiful Janet Lee uh, in Psycho, who they bump off real early. So, uh, here. And if you haven't seen the TV show, uh, Bates Motel, it's actually pretty good. So, i got a few more to go here. Um, you know, again, this is different from my regular videos, so I hope you like it. Um, Sid and Nancy. Sid and Nancy was a movie that was done in 1986. And this is actually uh, one of Gary Oldman's very first movies and has a small cameo of a very young, very fat Courtney Love. 
at the end when they're in New York City. This, of course, is the story of former Sex Pistol bassist, bassist Sid Vicious and his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen, who uh, had a very volatile relationship. Uh, they were heroin addicts. And I just thought the movie was well done. I thought it told a good story. It wasn't glamorizing anything. It was a, it's a very unglamorous movie where everybody wants to make these people out to be, you know, oh, look how fantastic they are. It's a very sad movie. And the actors actually did the singing uh, in the movie, which I thought was fantastic. It's a good music score if you like that stuff. Ed Wood. I love this movie, Ed Wood. I've always liked the movie. Done in black and white. Uh, Johnny Depp, Martin Landau. Uh, you have Bill Murray. Just, you know, and Sarah Jessica Parker. Very good movie about the life of the director, Ed Wood. And it kind of delves deeper into his personal relationship with Bela Lugosi, uh, who, of course, was in some Ed Wood movies towards the end of his career. Uh, and again, it's another one of those that shows Bela Lugosi uh, kind of in a negative light where he's, you know, hey, uh, he, he was an addict, okay? He was an opium addict, he was a heroin addict, and it, it's a sad thing, but, you know, Ed Wood, right there. If you haven't seen that movie, very good movie. Directed by Tim Burton as well. Uh, if you, Searchers isn't my favorite Western, this is my favorite Western, The Magnificent Seven. Uh, taken from the Japanese movie Seven Samurai. Uh, tells the story of a small Mexican village who is terrorized by bandits every winter before they go up to the hills. Uh, they come and take everything from the village. And they have no more money. They have enough money to hire seven gunmen. Uh, Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, Charles Bonson, Robert Vaughn, James Colburn, uh, Eli Wallach. Literally a who's who of movies. Lots of action, good individual story. Magnificent Seven, if you haven't seen it. If you're a Western fan, you haven't seen this movie, you're not a Western fan right here. Um, a movie that a lot of people don't understand. I love this movie, 1969, Midnight Cowboy. John Voight and Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, John Voight plays a gentleman from Texas who goes to New York with dreams of being a hustler, a male hustler, and thinks that he's just going to go up there and wine and dine all these rich ladies and make tons of money, but, you know... Uh, to take a, you know, a line from one of the uh, movies I showed you, um, all the plans, you know, plans of mice and men don't always work out. It didn't work out for them. Uh, and it shows a very unusual friendship between the two. Uh, this movie was given originally an X rating uh, when it came out in 1969. And it is the only picture to win Best Picture with an X rating. And it's not an X rating because of the gratuitous sex, because there isn't a lot of gratuitous sex in it. Uh, it's got the X rating because it deals with male hustling, it deals with uh, drug addiction and just stuff that was really taboo in the 60s uh, that people just didn't want. You just didn't see that every day. So, Midnight Cowboy. Okay. Jaws. Everybody's seen Jaws. Steven Spielberg, uh, you know, the masterpiece. Richard Dreyfuss. Of course, uh, Quint, my favorite. This is uh, the book anniversary, the book version of it. I love Jaws. I've always loved Jaws. Uh, you know, being from the San Diego originally, living on the water, uh, kind of made you think about, you know, could there be a big shark out there? Jaws, on my list of always top things. Of course, my favorite movie of all time. Uh, clean it up a little bit. Halloween. Um, I have about 25 versions of this movie in different styles, whether it's import or... It's a movie that if it comes out with a version, I'm going to buy it. Halloween, no need to tell you, there's, you know, Michael Myers there. Uh, another fantastic Western, fantastic Western, Outlaw Josie Wales, Clint Eastwood, uh, 1976, uh, about a guy, Josie Wales, who's on the run. Uh, the law's looking for him because he was with a group of people in the Civil War, and he's like the last of the holdouts. And he's a killer. He... Is a killer for the right reasons, though. He doesn't kill people just to kill them. You're going to try and kill him, he'll kill you. And it, excuse me, it shows a very good heart that he has. This this movie is just, it's a fantastic story start to finish. I love the movie. Outlaw Josie Wales. And the final one on my list, uh, again, it's a campy movie. 1963, it's a mad, 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 mad world. If you like funny slapstick movies, this is the movie for you. This movie, if there was a star in the 60s, they're in this, even in just a little cameo. Jerry Lewis has like a 30-second cameo in this where he runs a hat over in a car. 
Uh, this movie is 163 minutes, 160 minutes, and you would never know it because it's fast-paced, it doesn't slow down. It's about a group of people, uh, they come across, you know, it starts off where a guy is driving and drives off a cliff and they find him on the side of the road and he talks to him about the money, the, the big treasure. And as people start looking for this treasure, more and more people get involved. It's, it's, it's a real goofy movie, uh, but it's a movie that I, I can watch all the time. It's a mad, 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 mad world. So that, that was kind of just a real quick video because someone wanted me to do a video on movies. So I did. Um, I will do some videos on some older books or on something. Um, if you like the video, be sure give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want me to do a specific genre of movie, by all means, give me the genre of movie. I have a massive movie collection and will show uh, you know any type of movie that you want and show you my personal favorites. And you know if you want a movie review or something, leave it in the comments and I'll do that for you. So again, uh, this is a little something different off of the ordinary, just get a video out there. Again, I appreciate all the support. I hope everybody liked it. Uh, but again, this is my personal choice for my personal movies. I'm not saying they're the greatest of all time, they're the ones that I like. So I hope you liked the video. But as always, if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great night.